I don't know why we're here. Why are we why? driving this car? Who what are we doing about in New York? Car? Who cares about the 86? I don't know. We no never, it, we, we never talk about the 86, ever. Not on our it podcast. never comes up. Never on the channel. It's just not a car we care much about. It just really doesn't register with us. You're right. I can't believe they've made a second gen. Here it is. And they've set out to try to solve the number one problem that everybody talks about, and that is the engine. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. We are at the Toyota Press Launch in the Monticello Motor Club. They've invited everybody out to yes. drive the new 86. I think half the but people here it. owned one. You're right. You're half right. the journalists had one in their garage at some point. We're all just comparing notes about all the when owners. you had yours, sure. what was that like? Just come on out. So what we're doing is a street drive and we're getting track time. Yep. The good thing is they have brought the old generation. The, yes. This is the new one, mm -hmm. the 2.0. I said the first one was 1.0 when it came out. Yes, you did. And I feel vindicated because this now has the power that we needed. But you know, it isn't about horsepower. It's about torque. It is. It's and it's all about the torque in this car. And it's about the torque curve. Yes. Which in the last one had a saddle in the middle. I mean, it was just, you know, random dip in the place that you're going to yeah. use the most. And look, I was an owner. I had an FRS 2013 and I got rid of the torque dip. I know it can be done. And yes. I, I heard from all of you that drove them and said, it's not a yes. car about power and the torque dip is fine. And all you got to do is shift. Here's the thing. Not true. But here's the thing. You can't shift around the problem in first gear. When you leave no. a light, you just gotta suffer through. Yes. Okay? Yes. This is a 2.4 liter engine, 228 horsepower. 228, but we're now up to 184 pound feet of torque. That's the key thing. 20% more torque, but the thing and, I love about that a is. Nice curve. The, nice yes. It's a great curve. mountain curve, but what's also really cool is the peak of the torque output it is 3,700 RPM. Yes. The last yes. one was in the 5,000s after it dropped into nothingness and climbed its way back out. And that was really noticeable on the track earlier. It was yeah. an original version on the track. And you could just feel the car find itself. Here, totally. you can happen to not be in the perfect gear. You can happen to be driving like a normal person and not caning the car. And yes. guess what? It, it, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. This is not a revolutionary engine chain. It's like, oh, this has well, so much power now. Look, for the but car, I think it is. It kept me from really liking it. What, what What's interesting, though, is it is a, it, it's turned the car into a car you can drive subconsciously, and it'd be fun. It's a car you don't have to think about okay. finding the power. It's got the power yeah. that it should have had. It's got power that just feels normal. For a small, yeah. inexpensive, lightweight sports car, it just feels normal. And then when you do cane it, it feels like, oh, this does have more power. Agreed. But what I'm surprised, Agreed. especially in a road drive right now, we happen to be in the automatic, okay? In a road drive like we're doing right now, what I'm surprised by is that normal driving, it just feels, feels normal. Normal, I agree. I, that, and that that is yes. quite a change because the last one, you were always making an excuse or working around the issues with the engine. Mm -hmm. And that's just gone now. Mm -hmm. And what you've been left with is a car that I think doesn't feel much different, but feels more premium. It's not something you have to apologize for anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what I felt like I was doing was going, yeah, I, I like that everybody likes it, but it's not for me. This is now a great driver's yeah. car. Here we go. Always nice when Toyota can give you a track day. <laughs> yeah. If you've never been at Monticello Motor Club, we highly recommend it. Yes. We have never been here until now, and this track is made for this car. It's a great track. Just tiptoeing out of there. I'm, I'm wanting to get slidey, but I'm just tiptoeing right now. <laughs> This might be second gear, but you've got torque, so you have the option. You can you leave do. it in third yep. now. Yep. How revelatory. Yeah. Yeah, it just climbs out, which it never it does. Did Finally. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it in third and connect the lines here. Interesting that you even can. This is good. <laughs> Yep, right there is where you need it. That's great. And look down, we're just into 4,000. 
thrilled. Toyota, you've done a hell of a job on this car. Yeah. I'm pretty pleased. Everybody's still running? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep, we'll get in there. We'll get in there. We're good. It, this is not a powerhouse. It hasn't become a powerhouse car, but it's satisfying to put it your is. foot to the floor it and is. go, oh, okay, it has a little bit of power. It's got you the can, power it needed. You can feel the car gather itself up and go, oh, you're serious. Yep. Which before it was just, we're waiting on it, which was too bad. Yep. But the dynamics and the balance are still here, which is wonderful. And I actually wonder, I, I don't know that I'm right, but I feel like having driven the older car today as well, I feel like this rotates more toward its center of mass than the last car. I feel like I the other right. one rotated a little further forward on the nose than this does. Which is actually and a good I'm thing because you can throw it on that. its tires. I'm thrilled about the fact that it rotates so close to dead yeah. center. I do think it's more than the last one, which is crazy to say. Slightly, not, not a big move, you understand, but I do think it's different. That's just, that's where we're at now. They're fun laps, they're pleasurable laps. Mm -hmm. It's like skiing on blues all day long. <laughs> you're, you're finding some good terrain, but you're yeah. just enjoying yourself now. Yeah, There's yeah. not the overwhelming, sure. what happens, you know. You've got it. There's so much more going on here than mm. just engine, even though that is the great big news and it's wonderful it transforms the car and I finally really do like it but not only have they done that they've stiffened the car and both Todd mm -hmm. and I have felt a dramatic stiffness increase yep. it's changed the structure feels different but the steering doesn't feel that much different I, the steering benefits from the fact that the chassis is stiffer and yes. also I think that yes. the front end of the car feels more grounded than the last one but I don't think I got more steering feel. Now, the last that's car, okay. I agree, that's the okay. last car had decent steering feel, yeah. especially for an electronic steering rack. I also think it's funny because they did bring both versions. There's a base version. You can tell because it doesn't have the black wheels. Yes. The base the version has the same awful primacy tires of the prior version. And honestly, I got in that one on track and thought, this isn't any different than the last yeah, car. Yeah, agreed. It's just, it's on ice skates. Now you just have more power to overwhelm yes, the terrible it was, tires. It was on ice skates. Yeah. One of you is saying, no, I want to slide around, that's fine. But keep in mind, it's not just the back that slides yeah, around. No. The whole car slides around. You can get understeer just like you can get oversteer. Yeah. Well, the thing about this car is that there's now a level of seriousness about the entire car and the program. Mm. Because you'll notice the 86 is now under Gazoo Racing, GR. It yep. is now an official GR car. Yep. This is a brand that Toyota is expanding now. This is motorsports. It's because Akio Toyota got behind the car and he wanted to make this really good. You can feel the fact that he made it so there were no obstacles in redeveloping the car. The other thing that Toyota has said, and we don't know, we can't confirm, they've said that their suspension tuning is noticeably different than Subaru's for the BRZ. Now, when the cars originally came out, the FRS and yes. the BRZ, they were different, and then they got kind of merged in the middle over the course right. of the first gen. So, supposedly, these two are different. We have not had them back to back. Nobody has yet. We'll see how they are different. But we do know that Toyota himself decided yes. that this car should have motorsport fine tuning. Yes. And we don't think that that's happened on the Subaru side. So I'm very curious to see what the differences are, but I can't get over the fact that this feels like, okay, we did well the first time, it's working for us, mm -hmm. how do we make it really good? Yeah. And so it, there's a uniqueness and a seriousness to it that the prior car didn't have. I feel like Toyota was just sort of like, let's try it, let's play around. Let's we've got a does. little sports car. Yeah. We had a Celica, but you know, we've got this now and let's let's try it. People can tune it up and mm -hmm. you know have at it. <laughs> and now we got serious. And then they thought, well, everybody likes it. We've got something now. And that bodes well. Yes, there's an automatic transmission, but the manual is still here and they're yes. serious about saving the manuals. The manual is there better. is good news. The manual has it's been refined. Better. And here's Agreed. the thing. I liked the manual on the first gen. I thought it was one of the better manuals being sold. They've actually actually refined it and the action is crisper. Yes. Now yes. we have an automatic here. The automatic is great for an automatic. It's an actual it's six speed automatic. Driving. The paddles respond pretty quickly actually. It's, They're decent. It's, They're not, decent. it's not a track automatic. It's yeah. not a, I'm going to make this my track car because the automatic is so solid too. That's not what it is. If you really want to enjoy shifting, you still need to be in the manual. And the manual, like I say, is better, which I'm thrilled by. Yeah. Also, I think, I think, we haven't had them back to back enough. I think the seats are better. 
I think they're a I little. Think they're better I think they're a little more wider down here. They're, they're, I think they're a little more long-term seats because the oh, last seats sure. were really good. If you weren't doing long road trips, these feel now we haven't had that a ton of time. Question. This feels like a car for longer distances with better comfort, which is I think interesting. You might be right. So because that I've never thought this was good. The, the original was good for road tripping or long distance. Yeah, I've you could do it, but that. it but it was you kind of had to dedicate yourself to it. <laughs> Let's talk about the interior first. I want you to notice every single thing in here is an element by itself. Mm. The screen is an element. The vents are an element. There's nothing that is driver-centric or some weird, let's try this and mm. it will date the car. There's rectilinear shapes and there's circular shapes. But everything in here is its own element. Each mm -hmm. knob, each switch, the shifter, everything about this interior doesn't have a hierarchy. You look at the steering wheel, and that's a thing. The vents are a thing. The screen, the, it's everything is its own element, and so it looks like a lot. But I like that it's simple. It keeps it clean. The last generation had a simple interior, and Relatable some people didn't shapes. like that. But I thought it was it was one of those things that's going to age pretty well because yes. it was simple. This is a significant upgrade while still staying simple. This has a all digital screen now, which is actually really helpful. It has multiple modes. Interestingly enough, the automatic version has more modes than the manual. The automatic version has more stuff than mm -hmm. the manual. The mm -hmm. manual is, is decontented, especially with, if you want all the safety things in the world, they're not on the manual. Which is what enthusiasts, all of us, have been asking for. We You're right. want just That's the manual fair. and an engine and a steering wheel. Give me a great car. That's what they have done. They've got a really good digital screen here that they actually are trying to reference the boxer shape of the engine yeah. with the screen. The screen can be changed depending upon your mode. Now in the auto, that means normal, sport, and track. In the manual, that means normal and track. The track one is actually really helpful. They've got yeah. a gauge that actually spreads. It starts really low in the RPM, and as you get like above 4,000, it spreads out. So you've got a lot of refinement. You know exactly where you need to shift, Those low which is RPMs helpful. don't matter on They track. don't matter at all, yeah. You need to know the mm -hmm. larger, and it, it divvies those up into a you know, a more fine tuning yep. for your RPM. Yep. We got to take a look at the exterior. Things are cleaned up here. There's not as many busy shapes here on the exterior. I don't think the personality has been lost because wait till you see it in person. The wheelbase has been extended five millimeters, and now we've got a ducktail spoiler, taillights that you might think look like Honda Civic, but the longer I look at this car, the more they are unique to the 86 now. Mm. And the headlights, a cleaner, little bit less busy shape, even though it's not as distinctive, makes the car look more premium. The only thing I wonder about, and there's been rumors, the only thing I wonder about is, I think the front half of this car looks like it could be a Lexus product. If you just put the Lexus Maw on the front, I and there's rumors that it might yeah, be, the, the yeah. vents behind the front wheels, which are actual usable vents, by the way, they actually do stuff. There's intake from the front bumper through those vents, which yeah. is great. But those vents, that looks like Lexus design thinking. If, and this is why I think the rumors exist that there's going to be a Lexus product. We'll see. I think that the first First gen looked more unique on the pantheon of cars. I think this looks Fair. more similar to other things. You're looking at it going, oh, that's a little bit of this. That's a little, the lights are a little Porsche and the side's a little Fair. Lexus. And you could say that about almost any car. You now. can. That was the interesting thing about the first gen, though, is I think it, it was its own shape. This has got some shapes that feel similar to other cars. Not necessarily a bad thing, sure. which is kind of merged with the rest of the world. But now that they're on a second generation, I think they can get away with that. Now they've established this shape. And now with the ducktail, there's a direction to it. It's very aggressive, but to do the ducktail spoiler, they had to clean everything else up and mm. just let it ride. I can't wait to say that I'm actually excited to drive it. All right. And we're out of the inn at St. John's. Joseph, Lake Joseph, whatever. That, that place, yeah. You're familiar with the reason they called this car the 86. Well, it's because the engine was a square engine. 86 millimeter bore, 86 millimeter stroke. Mm -hmm. But to get more power, they increased the cylinder bore. Yep. It is now 94 millimeters cylinder bore, but still 86 millimeters stroke. So it's still the 86. <laughs> Technically, we're still there. But it's not staying true to its roots, mm -hmm. which is the AE86. Yeah. But now we need to make changes. We need to improve it. And so we're going to increase the engine size, even though it's not really matching the badge anymore. But OK, but I'm I'll, fine I'll with that. I'll take that for the power. Because increase. we've got the, yes, the power. Absolutely. Are we in sport? You're not. You're Listen. normal. 
Okay, let's go to Sport and listen to that. The engine sounds completely different. It does sound different. I The thrash didn't match the power on the old one. That's it was a great just point. thrash. Yes. And I didn't go anywhere. It upset the driving because you couldn't be consistent because you lost power. You mm. lost torque. Yeah. And so you'd throw yourself in, whether you're on a street like this or you're on track, you would have to rethink and recorrect because just as soon as you need that torque, it wasn't there. Well, you're right. The noise now didn't, it's here. didn't match the, the power. I will say... Nothing about it matched. There's something different that they've done here now. There used to be a sound tube in, in the footwell of the right, passenger side. Right. Now they actually have a speaker buried in the dash that's giving you car noise. Interestingly enough, speaking of decontented stuff, less co content in the manual version, yes. things that are not available in the manual. You want the manual, you do, because it's actually an awesome manual. It really is. But good. Yep. There's two settings for how loud the engine noise is. Those two settings are only available on the automatic. Mm -hmm. In sport and track mode, it's louder through that internal speaker. In the manual version, it only comes in loud mode. And I actually think that's a mistake. I, I agree. They should yeah. allow you to turn it down no matter what. Or, all, you know what would be great? Off. I'd like to not hear any noise piped in at all. The, the, you can hear enough of this when you're thrashing it. You can hear the engine when you need to. Mm -hmm. Why not allow mm -hmm. you to be able to cut it back? I don't, I yeah, don't understand sure. why the enthusiast hasn't been given the option because yeah. piping stuff in is controversial for car enthusiasts anyway. Agreed. So that's the only thing. Look, all the extra safety Agreed. features and all that kind of stuff, I don't know that you need that, and that's only available on the automatic. This does have the rear blind spot uh, cross-traffic thing on the manual as well. The rest right. of them aren't available. Right. But that piped-in noise is unique, and somebody's going to be figuring out the way to chop that fuse right now. That's happening. <laughs> Somebody's going to be with fuse. either wires. Yeah, that, that's never coming Throw back. Throw it out. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, even in a straight line, even commuting, even just creeping along, I can tell you that this car has been so dramatically changed, this is absolutely the car I wanted it to be. Every little thing, whatever it was, that turn-in, the power, the rotation, it just wasn't quite there. But it's clear that Toyota has put a lot of effort, thanks to Akio Toyota-san. And because he did, it has transformed this car. And I'm very pleased to say that I really like it now. The other thing I was concerned about going from Gen 1 to Gen 2 is weight. The yes, first car yes. weighed a little under 2,800 pounds, which for a modern car is really light. For a modern car that's a 2 plus 2 is unheard of. Right. They've added right. a little over 100 pounds to the total weight of this car. First off, yeah, it's 100 pounds, but that's not that much in the grand scheme. We're talking about if you get the base model, you shouldn't, it's got terrible tires. If you get the base model <laughs> in manual, it's a little over 2,800 pounds, but if you get the premium model with everything, it's still about 2,850, 2,870. It's still pretty light in the grand scheme of like normal cars. Most cars are 32 yeah. to 3,600. We're at a little yeah. over 28 here. That still feels wonderful, and the car still feels light and involving as a result. That was something I was worried about. It's still great. A little bit more weight, but you get a lot more for that weight. You yeah. get more power, you got everything else. The brakes are upgraded, the suspension, the chassis, tuning, the rigidity, mm -hmm. everything is worth that weight. I don't want you to get the wrong impression that this car is this huge seismic shift from the first. The first gen is excellent. What's great is this is refined in all the ways the first one fell short. So if you like the first one at all, you've got a great car here. You're Good right, car. it's not that dramatic, but it's dramatic enough for me that I now like it. it. It's pushed me past that line. I just couldn't allow myself to like the other car. And most of it is attributed to power. 